Hello everyone, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. Welcome to my February online workshop. I'm just gonna go on my iPad, make sure I can see you guys. And you are there. So I just wanna say hi before I begin. Um, I have seven projects lined up for us today for our February workshop. And at the end is when I show you my free card kits and I will also show you my free gift that I'm offering. I have two today, actually I have two free gifts. And just to let you know, this is our last month with celebration. Now, for those of you that are not aware, celebration started um, the first week of January. This year, we're changing things up a little bit. We're going for two months, so January and February, where you can earn some free products out of this catalog. And then we're also going to have celebration again later on in the year, um, July and August. We're gonna have celebration number two, and we're going to have some new products that you're going to earn for free. So let me go ahead and point you guys down. I can see you guys all hopping on, so hello and welcome. I'm going to point you down and we're going to get started on the workshop. So hold on just a second. Hopefully I won't lose you. I just need to get my iPad right in front of me so I can see you. Okay, now I think I've got you guys. So let me just make sure everything's lined up. Okay, before I get started on my first project, I wanna talk a little bit about a promotion that we have going on that started um, this past week. It's the Hey Chick and the Hey Birthday Chick stamp sets. Now, if you'll think back to 2017, that was quite a few years ago, we had this set, uh, stamp set that you guys could earn for free during celebration. What is great is Stamping Up just brought this back as an available stamp set. Some of you might still have yours. And then you can also, oops, my dies kind of flopped all over. You can also order the dies to go with the stamp set. And there's additional dies in there other than the stamped images. And then we also are introducing a new stamp set to go with a combination of the first one the hey, uh, hey Birthday Chick. The same chick images, but they're doing something different than the first one. And then we have the dies on that also. I featured this stamp set on my blog for a whole week and I posted some samples on Facebook. And I just wanted to go through the cards with you. So seven days of cards that I did. This was the first one. Just gonna go through them slowly, make sure you can see them. I'm going to take this one out of the cello bag because it has some glitz on it. I used the metallic mesh ribbon on this one as a background. I think this is my favorite card. I had a lot of people that like this one. Let me go ahead and take them all out so they don't glare. This one I just did like a monochromatic ink, just one ink color, and I used a blender pen to spread the ink a little bit. This one is one with the additional dies that you'll see in one of the sets. It has the little chicken coop and then the little corn stalks with the corn, a little tree stump. It has a lot of detail inside. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. This one is just a clean and simple because what I did on this one is I used the, the uh, chicken wire die. I actually dipped the die in my ink pad and used the die as, an, as a stamp. So you can see I stamped right in the background. Very light, subtle stamping. This one is the little chicken feed bags. I did a little pyramid with them. And then this was my last one. Now this one is part of a, a tutorial medley team that I belong to. And what I'm doing with that is we have this little sneak peek here. There's actually 10, I have 10 on here, but one of the girls did two cards. So there's actually 11 project sheets and I've emailed those to anybody that purchases any of the Hey Chick uh, products. It doesn't have to be a bundle. You can just buy the stamp set or the dies. Any of the products in both bundles, I email you the free project sheet so you have some ideas to go by. Now, one thing about 
these two product, these uh, bundles, they have been very, very popular. They're already on back order, but get in there and place your order. Um, they're supposed to be available again on February 15th and they go all the way till the month of June. So just, they're just on back order right now and you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for them to send them out to you. Okay, let me get set up for my first um, project. Now on my first project, when I do my workshop, I usually try to do a technique or a card fold. Today I'm going to be doing a technique. So let me dig out everything that I need. I have a really neat technique to show you. You're going to do a little bit of die cutting. Now I always put everything in a shoe box, so everything that goes with the project, when I'm done, I'll put it back in here to try to alleviate some of the clutter that I get. So let me go through some of these products. So I'm using the Forever and Always stamp set, along with the Always dies. And the dies that I'm using today is the little cluster of flowers. And the, this here that will cut out the love. I'm going to show you the card here in a minute. I'm also using the Champagne Rhinestone Jewels. Now this is a new punch in the mini catalog, the Treasure Tags Punch, and you can see that there's two shapes. <coughs> Excuse me. For ink, I have Versamark, Memento Tuxedo Black, and Seaside Spray. Now let me show you the card. So what I'm doing is it's a technique and I'm actually using three colors of embossing powder. I've got the clear, the gold, and the silver. And I'm going to show you how to do three different colors. Look how pretty and shiny that is. Now on this card I used Flirty Flamingo and I wanted to change it up a little bit. So this time I'm using the Seaside Spray. So we're going to have a boy, a boy card and a girl card. Okay, so for cardstock, I've got basic black, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So let me go ahead and fold that on the score line. Basic white, five and a quarter by four. That one is just going to be glued to the front. And then I have a second piece of basic white, but this one is the thick and this one measures three and three quarter by five inches. And that's the one we're going to do all of this pretty embossing on. So let me just make some room here. I'm going to bring in a scrap piece of grid paper. Now I'm going to start out by doing the color. So I'm going to bring the Seaside Spray ink pad in and I'm just going to color on one end with the blending brushes and you guys know how much I love these. Now when I blend either using a sponge or a blending brush, I always start on the end and work my way in and then as you do that, you'll see that your colors will fill in because sometimes you might have some lighter spaces in there. So I always keep starting on the end and work my way in. Okay, I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Okay, there's my seaside spray. Now I'm going to bring in a used dryer sheet just to take the static off. I'm just going to rub that across and I'm going to start out with the clear embossing powder. I'm going to take the Versamark ink pad. I'm going to actually go a little bit at an angle because you can see here that I went that. I'm just going to pounce. Try to go down. I didn't want a straight line so I went at an angle. 
And then I'm going to put the clear embossing powder on there. And then when I'm done my embossing powder, I always put the lid on because you're going to bring the heat tool in and the powder is going to go flying. Okay, I'm going to make a little bit of noise. I'm going to melt the clear and you'll see how dark it'll get when it starts melting. Okay, there we go. It's going to go fast once it really heats up. Okay, there we go. You guys can see it going. It's like it's traveling. Now the tip to using a heat tool, I know I've used this before in one of our classes and some of you guys said you usually burn your paper. Do you see how I'm moving it all the time? That's the trick. You just need to keep moving your heat tool. Okay, I've got that one all done. Now let me see if I can capture how shiny that is. So now we're going to move on to the gold part. So I'm going to bring the gold powder in. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to pounce. It doesn't matter if you get some on the, the clear side. It'll cover it anyway. Let me see if I got it enough. Okay, well now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carefully... You guys are going to see some rice on my embossing powder. I do that just so it keeps the moisture out. So I'm kind of guiding it where I want it. Okay, there's my gold. And you can see that I overlapped over the clear on the first uh, round that I did. Now, look at this go. There's my gold. It's getting all nice and shiny. So you can pretty much tell your powder where to go by moving your paper around when you spread it. Okay, so I'm all done with the gold. So this would be called a multi-colored embossing. Now we're going to do the silver on this part. So again, I'm just going to pounce with the Versamark. And I always make sure I ink my ink pad nicely when I'm going to do a lot like this. Okay, now we're going to do the silver. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to just splatter it on there. Okay, there's my silver. the lid on there and I got to use the heat tool one more time and you're going to see how nice and shiny the silver will turn can you guys see that the way it moves and I usually hold this up to the light to make sure that all the powder is melted okay so there's the three colors. Look how cool that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this on the card front using dimensionals. So this would be a good technique to do for those of you that do classes with some new students that you're trying to introduce to heat embossing. And it just makes such a pretty metallic background. Okay, I got the pink on this side on this card. I'm going to do the blue, the seaside spray on the opposite side. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to bring in the Tuxedo Black ink to do my sentiment. Use, um, so love you so very much. I need this one more time also for the love. So 
Look how pretty that font is. Oops, I think I was a little off the camera there when I did my stamping. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the Treasured Tags Punch. I used this one on the first card, so I'm going to use the second one. Just so you guys can see the different shape. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to actually flip this over so I can make sure that's centered, which it is. And this kind of just does um, a rounded edge only because I use so little of it. But you can see the bigger your piece is, the more uh, detail there is to it. So now I'm just going to glue this on flat. Can you believe I'm not using dimensionals? That's going to go right here, about a quarter of an inch from the uh, bottom. Well, it's a little, little crooked. There we go. Now I'm going to bring in my little machine to do the die cutting. And if you guys watched me on my group page yesterday, I'm going to explain this again in case I have new people on here. If you buy this machine and you're finding that your plates are not grabbing correctly to, to start going through, the tip is to not line all three of them even on the end. What you need to do is take the middle one and stagger it about a half an inch. And what happens is when it goes through the machine, it'll grab and you can see that I can press on these. It'll press and actually put it through easier. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the love. I am going to use a little piece of washi tape just so it doesn't move on me. Let me see, I'm going to do that down here. I have a camera right in front of my face and I can't see. Okay, I'm going to put this through. And again, I'm going to stagger the middle plate and look how easy it grabs. So there's my beautiful love and my next one is just basic black with the little flower cluster of four. Okay, and it cuts four flowers in one swoop. I love that. Now let's bring the card back in. I am going to add dimensionals to the love. And that's going to be seated right at the top. And then I'm going to bring in my glue dots. Let me see if I can find the last one. There it is. I'm going to Glue those right to the background. Now this sticks really well using the glue dots, especially on the metallic. So I've got four flowers. One more. And the last step on this one is to add the champagne jewels and I have one in the center of each flower. The champagne jewels are kind of a goldish tone, so I thought it would look great with the metallic on the background. So there we go. Those are the two cards for the technique. And again, this is the multi, um, what did I call it? Multi-colored embossing powders. Isn't that cute? Which one's your favorite, the pink or the blue? I don't know. I, I kind of like the brightness of the pink. Okay, now let's go ahead and set up for my second batch of cards. Again, there's my shoe box with all of my goodies in it. I'm going to take my projects out of the way so you don't see them right off. And I forget to mention, for those of you joining in later, welcome if you watch this after my live. 
I've had quite a few of you guys ask me where my videos are. My videos are always on the workshop page. And the quickest way to find them is to go to the top and click on media and then videos. You'll see every month is still there. Okay, we've got the double oval punch, the banners pick a punch. This time I'm using the Garden Wishes stamp set. Now there is a coordinating dies that come with that, the Dandy Wishes, but I'm not using them today. I'm just using the stamped images. This is a great set. I have a pattern here I'm gonna show you because I'm gonna do something different today. Now I am using the garden, the Dandy Garden Memories and More cards and envelopes. I just wanted to bring this out to show you that there are 20 cards and they have pre-printed designs on them. And there are 20 envelopes with a design on the front and a design on the flap. So you can see how pretty these are. 20, you guys, for $10. That comes out to 50 cents each for the two piece set. So that's a great price. They're already scored for you. There's already designs on them. I just love them. And because I, so I used three for my projects, I'm gonna use three with you. That leaves me with how many? Seven, uh, what's six, uh, 14. I have 14 of these remaining. So this first seven people that place orders with me, I'm going to give them a two, two of each in their, in their thank you uh, package. Okay, so I've got three envelopes because I'm making three projects. I have three card bases. Now these are a little bit larger than what we're used to. Now I'm trying to find my ruler just so I can tell you. So the card, when, once this is folded, the card is actually going to measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So a little bit longer. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a tickle in my throat today. I'm just going to go ahead and fold two of the card bases. I'm going to make two cards at once. And then the third set, I'm going to, going to use and show you how to do a 3D project with it. That's where this pattern comes in. So let me bring out the two cards. So look how easy it was to decorate the front of these two cards using the Garden Wishes stamp set. Now all I did was add a layer of bumblebee. So I'm going to bring two pieces out. And these measure three by four and a half. And what I did is I used the in color bumblebee ribbon. I wrapped around each one and I tied it into a knot. Very easy. Let me trim the ends. And then what I did is I brought the knot. Let me put this right in the middle, first of all. And then I slid the knot over right to the left hand side. So there's one. I just love that these are all pre-printed. They're so easy to decorate on the front. You've seen me use uh, some of our envelopes like this before. I got my ribbon backwards. So again, I'm just making a double knot, maybe. I should have brought my camera up a little bit. I ju I'm just noticing that I'm cutting off on the bottom. I'll try to remember to stay upwards. Again, I'm gonna th uh, push that over to the left. And this is the Bumblebee in color ribbon. So two panels, two card bases. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue those on. And that's going to go right in the center. So there's number one. Number two. Next layer is basic white. 
And you guys, I'm really getting used to saying basic white because remember, we no longer have Whisper White because the company that was making the Whisper White went out of business because of COVID. So we now have basic white. These two measure four and a quarter by two and a half. And I'm gonna stamp two separate images using Bumblebee ink. So the first one is this pretty image that has uh, three dandelions on it. And I'm just gonna stamp that right in the center. Okay, there's my first one. My second one is a single dandelion, but I went ahead and stamped it twice that you can see on my card here. There's number one and number two. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and do the banners for each one. And those are one inch by three and a half. Now, I always tell you before you try your stamp out, you might not get your, um, your image correctly on there when you put it on. So I always try it on grid paper first. I use one of the lines. See, this one's perfectly straight. So that one should be good. Now I'm gonna try this one. Your acts of kindness are like a breath of fresh air. Again, I'm gonna use one of the lines here just to see if I can line it up straight. And I do. So now I can go ahead and do the real thing. But you know what? There's always two sides to a paper, your cardstock. So if you mess up, you can always flip it over. Perfect. Let's see if we can do two perfects in a row. Perfect. And now I'm going to bring in my banners pick a punch. I'm going to do both ends. Make sure it's in the center. I love these punches. We have quite a few of them now. Here's banner number two. Okay, and we have everything we need to finish the cards. And guess what? We're going to use stamping dimensionals on both of these. And I know I have ribbon going through the middle, so that's why I'm putting those two the way I positioned them. So it's not too bulky over the rain, uh, the, I almost said the rainbow, too bulky over the ribbon. Oh, Regina, you just ordered this stamp set. You're going to love it. Now, I wanted a lot of the bumblebee color to show up on where the ribbon knot is. So when I put this in place, I'm doing a quarter of an inch around all three sides. That way you can still see the ribbon. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And again, I'm going to put that over right on the edge, a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to glue, believe it or not, I'm going to glue the sentiment flat. I know you guys always tease me about the dimensionals that I use. Okay, now I'm going to swap these. I'm going to do this sentiment on this one this time. And for those of you watching, I, I am going to have a door prize sign up at the end of, of when I'm done. And you guys will have a chance to win all of the projects I'm creating today. Okay, those are the two cards. Now I just got to step down for a minute. I dropped a piece of cardstock for my next project. Okay. So these are the envelopes that go with the cards. Look how pretty those flaps are. Okay, so let me put these aside. 
Now, project number three, believe it or not, I am going to be creating this little box with this card base. You can see how cute it is. It's got some of the pattern on the side. And then you just untie the ribbon and the box opens. So let me go ahead and get my scoring tool. And I will have the measurements for the box. So I have a pattern here. I'm going to take a picture of it and I'll put it on the page. So if you guys want to copy this, you're welcome to. Now, let me see. I just got to situate myself. It's going to go this way, I think. I'm going to score at one and a quarter, three and five eighths, four and seven eighths. You guys love these fractions, don't you? Seven and a quarter. Okay, so again, I did one and a quarter, three and five eighths, four and seven eighths, seven and a quarter. Now we're going to turn it this way. We're going to do one and a quarter. And I'm going to turn to the other side and do one and a quarter. That's it for the scoring. Now I need the scissors. And what I did first is I cut off the square in each corner on the first section only. So these two squares, we're going to cut those off completely. And then we need to make tabs. We're going to have uh, four tabs on each side. So then what we need to do is, is cut on the score line up to the score line. So there's one two and three and I always like to angle my tabs so that they're easier to glue when it comes time and I did not angle this one because this will be the outside of it so we're going to angle one two and four so there's one and look I'm not taking out much I'm just taking a little sliver one, two, we're going to skip this one, and then we're going to do this one. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. Again, just on the score lines, up to the score line. And then this is one. Number two. And number three, or number four, you skip three. Okay, there's our little box. So now all I have to do is fold on all of the score lines, not the middle one. And these are all gonna fold over. we can start assembly. Now the reason I did not angle the cut, so this is going to be your outside tab. So you want to keep that one square. Now what I'm going to do is actually add glue there and there. I should show you how it opens too. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't glue that one down. Wait a minute. What did I do wrong? Okay, my box is actually, yeah, we're good. We're good. So I'm going to glue those on the inside. My box is going to be different on this one, I think. Okay, there's those two tabs. Because I had the pattern on the left-hand side. If you have the pattern on the right hand side when you're scoring it, you'll end up with the tabs this way. So at least you'll get to see both versions, which is okay. There's my two tabs.
You see how easy that is? Okay, there's my box bottom. The only difference is my pattern is on the top on this one. I'm going to tuck that back in. And on this one, my pattern is going to be on the bottom of the box. So if you want your pattern to be on the top when you score, put your pattern on the left-hand side of the scoring tool. Okay, that's the only difference. That's not bad. Now I've got this that I need. I don't need that one. Okay, we've got Bumblebee, and that is two inches by three and a quarter. That's actually going to be glued to the box. You guys saw me kind of stop when I, I set up my scoring tool. I couldn't remember what side I put the designer paper on. Okay, now we're going to grab the ribbon. I'm going to wrap that around the box. I'm not going to glue it in place because you want the receiver to be able to untie the ribbon and open the box. So I'm just going to create a bow. I'm going to make my loops a little smaller. And then cut those at an angle. Okay, so we've got the ribbon in place. Now, notice the little pattern that I have on the front here. I am actually going to take this pattern off the envelope. The envelope is no longer, no longer has a card base because we use the card base for the box. So I decided to cut up the envelope for a layer on the top of my box. And then of course you can keep the flap and do something else with it too. I'm going to cut the flap off. And then I don't want this line right here, so I'm going to just chop that off right there. I actually could open this up now. No, I can't. Not yet. And then you could keep this and use it for white on something else. And let's see, I'm going to go about there. I'm just eyeballing. But now I need to measure. So this actually measures one and three quarter by three. So one and three quarter by three. And there's my little piece I'm going to put on the top of my box. And I glued that on with dimensionals. Now I'm not going to put dimensionals over the ribbon because the ribbon is kind of just sitting there after they untie it. So I'm just going to glue that right over layer number one. Look how cute that is. What a nice little layer. And then lastly, with the bumblebee ink, I have the little hello to stamp on basic white and I'm going to use the small oval on the double oval punch to chop that up I'm going to put my ink pad away and then again I'm just going to glue this flat like I did on the cards so there's that look at the nice set so you've got a box the two cards and then the two coordinating envelopes. So that makes a really nice set. And again, whoever I pick, you're going to win a set of this along with the other projects that I'm creating today. So I hope you like the set of three. Now let me move on. I got to clear my counter. That's how I lose stuff, you know, when you guys hear me say, oh no, where is this? Because I just kind of go like this and everything goes flying off to the right. Okay. One thing I want to announce, I do have another door prize. It's the same as last month, only because this is the last month of celebration. I have another punch party stamp set. 
This is the one that you can earn for free with a $300 order. So this is a great set. And it goes with the punch that I'm using today also. So this will be a door prize for anybody that fills out my door prize form. And I also have a door prize number two, which is a stamping up face mask. Look at the pretty colors. So I'm going to draw a name for that also from the door prize form. And let me see, I wanted to show you some cards before I start in with my last set of projects. Some of you guys probably saw them on my blog. This is using the floating and fluttering stamp set. Now you guys saw me do these last month during my workshop. I'm just going to bring it out again in case we have new people. Now this was a set of three cards that I did um, starting with the clean and simple. This was just a clean and simple card. I stepped it up by adding some watercolor paper and a splash of color on the background. And then my, ter my third card was a double Z fold. You can see how it opens. And this again is part of my stamp set feature. I'm featuring a stamp set uh, on my blog seven days straight. So these are all with the floating and fluttering. This is card number two. And I have a lot of the clear Wink of Stella on the wings. Same thing with this one. I have clear Wink of Stella. I did a little bit of stenciling to create uh, the bokeh effect on that one. This one I did multiple butterflies and I just framed the sentiment with each butterfly using dimensionals. My next one was actually a swap card that I did with a team that I'm on. And I love the colors. The butterflies are actually uh, petal pink. Number six is using the butterfly die cut that adds detail. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera. And then I just took a sponge dauber and add just a little bit of color in the middle. And my last one, I was the designer last week for the 3D Thursday team. I, I did this little wall hanging. And I used some of the gold, uh, the gilded leafing on the flowers. I added a lot of gold there. But I used the wood grain paper, two layers, and then added some three-dimensional butterflies and flowers. So this is from the Floating and Fluttering stamp set. If you haven't bought that one yet, it's a great set to purchase. Okay, let me just get my stuff for my last three projects. Here's my shoe box. My shoe box is quite full. Get a lot of inks. Some pretty colors. I've got blending brushes. This is the stamp set I'm using. Oh, you guys, I forget to mention something with um, my second set of projects. I've been trying to give you guys ideas for celebration. So with the garden, uh, Dandy Garden Memories and More cards that I just used for my project number two, if you add in the cards and envelopes that I just showed you, along with the stamp set and the double oval punch that I used, that brings you exactly to $50, and then you can pick one celebration item for free. So that's scenario number one. If you want to work your way to a level two celebration, it would be the same products, but then adding the ribbon I use, the basic white cardstock, bumblebee cardstock, bumblebee ink pad, and the banners pick a punch equals 105. That would give you, um, oh, this should say two, two celebration product level one or one level two. So I will put this on the page also. These are just ideas. To, if, if you're wondering what you could order to um, earn free celebration products, just two ideas here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'll give you some ideas once I'm done with the cards. Okay, I've got a lot of stamps to use today. Now, when I do my last three projects, these are the projects uh, that I'm going to have three kits 
that you can earn for free with a $50 or a $35 order. If you place a $50 order, you'll get the three card kits and then the Blushing Bride Glitter Ribbon. I love this ribbon because it's glittery on one side and then satiny on the other side. So this will be my free gift to you. I actually have two free gifts this month and I will announce the second one when I use it. I'll show you something that I'm, I'm going to use today. Okay, I have a mess going here because I have so many stamps. So I just need to move all of the stamps over and make some room. Now, what is the Friends Are Like Seashells all about? This is a great suite. It's got the stamp set that has 23 stamps in it. You've got, i got to move this over so you can read it. Seaside Shells Dies. Look at this big one. There's six dies. And then we also have the coordinating sand and sea designer paper. You can see all the beautiful colors here and all the patterns that are included. And then we also have the seashells embossing folder. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to use this so you'll see what it does once I start using it. Okay. I wanted to show you some cards that I did with my team recently before I move on to the projects. So you can see how pretty these, these designer papers are. These are just two sets of cards. I already gave two away. But this was some stamping that I showed them how to do by using three sheets of designer paper, cutting them in a certain way, and then you do three cards that are that have the same layers. So look how pretty. And then we have the little sticker decals that we can use also. Okay, let's get started with card number one. <coughs> some pretty colors. So remember, you're going to get all of the pieces to these kits. My card base on number one is Flirty Flamingo, 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. So I'm going to fold that on the score line. Then we have some pearlized, look how shiny, it's a pearlized specialty paper five and a quarter by four and I have some scrap basic white the card is right under here I'm not going to show it yet the tailored tag punch the everyday label punch and because you're getting this ribbon for free for placing an order we're going to use the ribbon on all three cards today now the inks I'm using are going to be for all three cards I've got crumb cake Flirty Flamingo, Misty Moonlight, Granny Apple Green, Balmy Blue, and Pear Pizzazz, Clear Wink of Stella, I've got my Water Painters, and then I've got Crumb Cake and Flirty Flamingo Blends Brushes, and what else? I think that's it. Okay. Card number one, I used the pearlized paper and I embossed it and added color. I hope you guys can see that. It's such a pretty card. I love the pearlized texture on this card. So the first thing I'm going to do is, let's see if I can find, happy birthday. And I'm going to use the crumb cake ink. So when you guys get this the kit for this card, everything will be embossed. All you'll have to do is add your own color. I'm going to show you how to do that. I will not have the sentiment stamped for you because one of Stamping Up's policy is we cannot stamp um, the elements in our card kits. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, stamp the happy birthday, and then I'm going to use the tailored tag punch to cut that out. And that just fits in there perfectly. 
And of course, if you order the stamp set, you'll be able to replicate what I'm using on the cards, right? Everyday Label Punch. And I'm going to bring in my machine to do the embossing. This time I'm gonna bring the big one in. Whoops. So I'm going to add the pearl, the pearlized paper right inside. that true. Okay, let me bring the card back in so you guys can see it. So on this one, I used Flirty Flamingo ink, the Crumb Cake, and the Granny Apple Green. So you can see what the embossing folder looks like with the paper in there. It's got a bunch of shells that actually go with the die. You can cut these out with the die also. Okay, I'm going to use crumb cake first. Just very lightly, I'm going to add color to the shells. Okay, you can see how easy that is. I'm going to do this little shell right here. Okay, and that's it. Look how simple that was. Now I'm going to do the same with the flirty flamingo. There's a little tiny one right there. This little tiny dab right here. And then this big one right here. I'm kind of just hitting the bumps. Okay, Let's see if you can see that. And then with the green, I'm actually gonna take the granny apple, I'm gonna squeeze right in the center, open up the lid, and I'm just gonna use the little tiny brush, add some water just to wet this. And I'm just going to quickly add color. Now, hopefully I can see all of this with the camera in front of me. But you can see how quickly I'm adding. I'm just kind of swishing it on. And of course, we're going to have to let it dry. And then there's some down here. And we've got one more right here. And you guys, because it's pearl underneath, it just sparkles. I just love the way that the, the pearl just really stands out. Okay, let's see. We've got a couple more right here, and then I think I got them all. Okay. Let me put that away. Now my next step, we're gonna glue that to the card front. So you can see it dries pretty fast. I mean, that's, that's, that's dry already. So now where is, I lost my snail, right here. I told you things go flying off to the right when I have to clear my counter. Now I forgot that this pearl paper is really slippery. So I actually had to use tear and tape. Because the tape roller kind of just rolls, it's just so slippery that it doesn't, um, it doesn't grab the adhesive as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and peel. So look you guys, we've got three, four, five. This is project number five already. Okay, now this is gonna be glued at an angle. You know what, this, this piece is a little bit bigger than this piece. I'm just realizing that. That's okay though. I didn't measure that very well. So this one is actually five by three and three quarter. This one is five and a quarter by four. 
Now we need to do the, the ribbon. And what I did is I just kind of added, let me see if I can get some of this to stick. Nope. I'm gonna have to use the tear and tape. I'm just gonna add two strips right in the middle, just like that. See where I added? I did these cards like weeks ago, so I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. I should take better notes. Okay, now I might need to add more, more tape. I'm going to cut this at an angle. And I'm going to start. Where's my tape? I gotta find my tape. Okay, I see it. Like that. Whoops. And then I went this way, except I started on the top with my other one, but that's okay. It'll be the same. I'm just kind of doing a zigzag. So up, down, up. Then we're going to do the everyday label first. Once I find my dimensionals. Oh, you wouldn't believe where I found them. They were almost next door. Okay, I'm going to glue these down with dimensionals. And that's going to go right on the ribbon. And we're going to do one more layer of dimensionals. And that's going to go right in the center. And then here you go. So a little bit bigger piece of, of um, embossing on this one. This one's a, a tad smaller. So there's card number one. So that'll be part of the free kit. Now let's get it set up for number two. Oh, I love number two. I think number two is my favorite. Okay, wait, I got a peek. I got to see what I need. I need some shells. One, two, three, and I think this one. Okay, I got to show it to you. It's so pretty. Now, the only thing when you get this as your kit, I can't do any stamping for you. So if you have the stamps, you're going to be all set. But what I thought I would do is I'm going to do the embossing and you can add ink just like I did. And you'll understand when I show you. So Seaside Spray 11 by 4 and a quarter scored at 5 and a half. Here is card number two. Look how pretty. That's that big die that cuts one big shape. I love that. I need my little splotchy stamp. And then we have a piece of the designer paper. I need to cut that. I forgot to cut it. So this is going to measure five and a quarter by four. Why I didn't cut this ahead of time, I have no idea. Okay, this time I'm going to start out with, whoops, Misty Moonlight Ink. And I'm just going to add just a bunch of bubbles. They look like bubbles. Just all over the designer paper. And what happens is they peek through on the die cut. So this, you cannot go wrong. Just stick them everywhere. Let's see, I'm going to do one more here. Maybe another one here. Okay, that's going to go on the card front. Maybe some of you guys will like card number three the most. I don't know. I like this one. Okay, that goes to the front. Now we're going to bring the machine back in. And a piece of basic white. I think it's this one. Oh, 
I need my, I need another, I don't want to ruin my, my clear plate. Let me get my yucky one. It's going to go in the bottom. And then we're going to bring in this humongous die, right? No, that's not what I need. What do I need? Yes, yes. I'm getting all confused, you guys. Okay, we're going to cut this humongous die. I'm going to make sure it's on there correctly. Oops, I need another plate. I forgot plate number two. I was all set up for my embossing folder. Okay, there's plate number two. We're going to need this one next. Okay. So look, this cuts out this humongous shape, but there's more. Now we get to stamp in that humongous shape. So let's see, I need balmy blue, flirty flamingo, crumb cake, and that's it. I'm gonna start with the big shell that goes right here. Now the, the tip, the most that I want to tell you about this is to put something dark underneath. So I usually use a mat because it's black and this stands out. I'm going to ink with crumb cake. And then you can pretty much see where you're going to stamp. So there's the first shell. Now we're going to do this big humongous one with flirty flamingo see how that's coming to life next is balmy blue there's that one and Flirty Flamingo with the little tiny one, even though it's covered, it's, I kind of covered it with the sentiment. And let's see, I need one more shell right here. Okay, here's the last shell. Now this one, I kind of had to look right here where it goes straight. That's where you place it this way. Look how cool, you guys. But it gets even better than that. I gotta make some room. Hold on. And I gotta find my embossing folder. Oh no, what did I do with my embossing folder? Hold on, I'm still looking right here. Okay, so step number one was to cut it out with the dies. Step number two was to stamp. Step number three we're going to put it inside the embossing folder. The best way to line it up is to look towards the front. I'm going to line that right up. And we're going to add some bumps to the stamped images. So now we need platform one and platform four. I'm going to show you underneath so you can see that it did press. It's hard to show on the camera, but th these are all raised. And what I'm going to do, because I cannot include the stamped images in my kits, I'm going to actually do the white. I'm going to do the embossing. And if you end up with the stamp set, you can just stamp over the bumps. It's still going to work. I'm just not allowed to include stamped images. Okay, let me bring the card back in. So now what I did with this is I added dimensionals. And I'm going to add some mini and some large ones. Because I wanted this to pop right off the card. But isn't that cool? This is like a three-step type thing. Die cut, 
stamp, and emboss. Okay, let me see what I've got going here. Actually, I don't think I need them. Well, I can do a mini. I can do one right there. And right here. I'm going to try to get one down here, too, just so that won't um, go flat on me. Make sure this is opening the right direction. So I see a lot of wows. Isn't that just the neatest? Another thing you can do, once you get these all stamped, you can cut them apart, too, and use them by themselves. You don't have to use them all as a grouping. But I just wanted to show you the magic of all the three steps. Somebody was really thinking when they came up with this one. Now, this is going to go right on the front. And now you can see how all of the little bubbles are peeking through the die cut. Okay, now let me find, let me find for you. And I need crumb cake. So crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock. And I need my oval punches again. So we're going to do one with a scallop. And then we're going to do one. Oops, I need to cut that a little bit. It's a little too long. One for the sentiment. We're going to layer these together. With guess what? With dimensionals. Okay, and I've got one more card after this one. Now this goes right in the middle. And, oh, I've got a disaster going on here, you guys. That kind of covers the little shell, but I thought this was the best place to stick these, the, the little sentiment. You can stick it wherever you want. Okay, the last part is the ribbon. Because this is the free ribbon spool, I'm just going to fold this over. I'm going to use, 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 use. Okay, hold on my glue dots. I think this is the worst my counters ever looked. I got so many products to use on these three cards. Okay, I added glue dots. And I'm just going to tuck that under. Okay, there's card number two. I really like this. Isn't that just the coolest? And I really need to try doing one with cutting these apart too, to use the shells separately. Okay, one more to go. You guys just saw me push everything. I'm, I'm going to lose something. I can just tell. Card number three. I'm going to start out with crumb cake. Oh, and I didn't score this, did I? You know what? My scoring tool is buried. So this is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. I'm just going to fold it because I don't even know where my scoring tool is. Okay, that's layer number one. And this is card number three. This is using the designer paper. Now I have two pieces of designer paper, four by three, it's going to go on the top, and then four by two and a half, because this kind of looks like sandy beach, and this kind of looks like sky. So we're going to glue that in place. This one is pretty quick. Um, the worst part is the stamping and the die cutting. But I did do a couple little of the die cuts ahead of time, just to save on time. And then we've got the sky. I'm just going to overlap where they, where they meet. That's no biggie. And then I'm going to add tear and tape where they meet. Oh, I've got a dimensional thingy on the back of that. Do you guys find these everywhere? They're always all through my house. I'm going to have to add another piece there. 
I find them in the bathroom. I find them in the kitchen. I just find these everywhere. Okay. This is what I'm going to use to glue the ribbon to because we have to add a ribbon to card number three also. We're just going to go straight across. And then I'm just going to trim the ends. Look how cool that looks with the two colors of the, the designer papers. Okay. This one says, friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. Isn't that true? So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And where's my punch? I forgot to grab my punch. This one is the story label punch. And that just barely fits in there too. I'm trying not to cut any of the wording off. Whoops, a little bit on the F. Okay, there's my sentiment. Now I have gone ahead and done the little greeneries. So there's two of each. I just need to do the three shells. So again, we've got the balmy, no, not balmy blue. We need seaside spray for this one. Oh, and you know what? I think I used that on card number, on card number one. Okay, here's the seaside spray. That's the color in the designer paper. And on this one, I'm actually going to use a blender pen. And I'm going to color with the ink line. So I'm going to get that ready. And then quickly just color with the ink lines. It's very subtle, almost too subtle. I'm going to grab some from the lid. Now, this is the only difference I'm finding with the basic white compared to the whisper white. I can't color like I used to with the ink lines. It just doesn't seem to be as smooth to color with. Okay, there's that shell. Now we're going to do the little one with Flirty Flamingo. I think this one will color okay. And the last one is the little star image and, and crumb cake. Where's my crumb cake? Right here. Nope, that's not it. Oh my goodness, I can't find my crumb cake. You know what? I'm going to bring out, oh, it's right here, you guys. How silly. That was kind of silly, wasn't it? Okay, there's my three items that I need to cut out. But before I do that, I want to add some clear wink of Stella. I want everything to sparkle. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm going to have to bring this up to the camera so you guys can see. So sparkly. Hopefully I can capture that. I need to add more to the shell, though. Or the sand dollar. Okay, so I just need to cut these three out because I already cut the others. Let me move all of this over so I don't ruin anything. I'm going to use the big one just so I can do all three. And let me grab some washi tape. You can find the end. Oh, this one's not ripping very well. There we go. Okay, let me do three. There's three pieces. I need the starfish, the little shell, 
and the sand dollar. Okay, I'm going to put this off to the side just for a minute so I can find them all. <clears throat> and once I get this cut out, I just need to assemble the cart and I'll be all done for today. One more. I hope that one's going to stay. Normally I would have had these cut out ahead of time, but I wanted you to see how I colored them and how I added the clear wink of Stella. Okay, so now I'm going to glue the sentiment in place first. Whoops, I peeled that one right off. The backing doesn't want to come off. Okay, that's going to go right over the ribbon. Then we've got the little big seashell, not the little one, but the big one. And we got the tiny one. The starfish. All these little pieces, but look what pretty layers they make when everything's put together. Now these, I'm just going to flip them over and add some liquid glue. And I'm just going to tuck and press in place on these ones. Let's see, I'm going to add one right there. The other one down here. And then these two funky ones. And I mean, you could keep adding and adding. These are so cute. There you go. There's card number three. So let me see if I can bring all of these three will be the card kits for this month with a fifty uh, $35 order. And then the $50 order will include the ribbon along with the card kits. Now,